Hi, so in my previous videos I showed you how to obtain a deadlock graph and um, when people say deadlock graph they usually mean a couple of things. One is the pictorial uh, deadlock graph which is kind of what you see here. Uh, I don't actually like this uh, picture of it be because the problem with this picture is, is it's actually missing some vital information that's available within the other uh, view of the deadlock which is the XML. So um, in, in the other videos I showed you how to get the XML uh, either via the profile, uh, the SQL profiler or via the extended events. Uh, so here I have the extended events and I'll click on uh, one of the deadlock graphs uh, which is just the XML. So uh, when you hear deadlock graph uh, uh, it really has uh, one of two meanings, the XML or the picture. Uh, here I'm going to concentrate on the picture and mainly in this video I'm going to show you how to translate these these uh, IDs into something meaningful that you could debug. Um, uh, but first let me go ahead and um, describe for you the sections of the uh, deadlock graph. Um, but before I do that, let me show you how uh, how I created these deadlocks. So um, I'm, I'm just uh, executing statements that would cause a deadlock. So here I'm updating uh, row, an, an ID with row, an ID of one, a, a row with an ID of one first, and then a row of ID of second. And then in another session, I am reversing the order. So I guarantee a deadlock by putting a delay here. And um, you'll notice here I wrapped this the same statement that would cause a deadlock within a store procedure. Um, and the reason why I want to do that is um, I want to create a deadlock where it's just these statements uh, deadlocking. But uh, in the second deadlock, I want to show you um, kind of like a stack frame of when it happens in a store procedure. There's actually kind of like a stack trace. Uh, so I created two deadlocks to show you that. So let me go back to my deadlock graph and um, you'll notice here one of the uh, processes is the store procedure. But let me go ahead and explain to you the three different sections of a deadlock graph. So the first section is the victim that this is the process that actually was determined by SQL Server to be the deadlock victim, meaning uh, this one would this process would not move forward. It's the other one that gets to move forward while this one is uh, killed. Um, so this is the victim, and then the second series, uh, the second section is the process list, and normally in most cases there's just two processes involved so let me separate out these two processes so here's the first process you see and here's the second process you see so that's the second section is the process list and the third section is actually the resources and the resources is typically uh, the indexes um, that are locked or the pages that are locked or the tables that are locked um, that is uh, preventing the other process from moving forward and vice versa so um, to let me go into a little bit detail about these IDs so all you have to do is look at these IDs and uh, lo lots of times I'll highlight this ID and I'll uh, just for readability purposes, I'll say I'll replace it with process victim, and you'll you'll notice if if I do a replace, I'm replacing that, and and also in the resource list. So so now I'm I'm not working with the IDs. I I just know which process is the victim and which process is the uh, which process is the survivor. So for example with this one I'll call it process survivor. So so this just makes it a little bit less confusing uh, as I'm trying to go through the deadlock graph. And, and you're wondering why I'm doing this instead of just looking at the picture and, I, and I'll explain a little bit more 
because I could actually get the row that it was deadlocked in uh, in, in certain circumstances. So I'm just going to replace all. Oh, whoops. Uh, wrong thing here. So I should have dead process survivor. Okay. So now um, now that I've identified which is the survivor and which is the victim, um, in the second section here, you'll, you'll notice there's a stack frame. This was actually the victim. And for the data, for the information I could read from right now, I, I could tell that when the deadlock was happening, it was it was calling this, and um, the exact statement it was calling was this statement. And you you have to be very careful when when you look at the processes, be, because it's not necessarily the case that this was the statement that was locking a particular uh, resource. Um, for you have to think of it in terms of the whole transaction. Um, it is certainly the case where one of these was actually locking the resources. One of the processes, one of the statements in the process, was actually locking the resource that caused the deadlock. But it could be the case where, uh, for example, I, I had a situation where. Uh, suppose this this was the process that was locking table A, um, but this statement here that it was showing wasn't locking table A. It was a statement before that within the transaction within the whole transaction uh, that was locking table A. Uh, whereas this was trying to access table A. So you have to be very careful and try to think of everything as the whole transaction. And and when I said when I said a previous statement, um, in my particular situation, it was C sharp code that was uh, basically in the in the C sharp code. It was beginning a transaction, and then it was updating table A, updating table B, update updating table C. Um, but it was at table C that the statement deadlocked. In which case, uh, that statement. Uh, accessing table C would show up here but in fact uh, what was locking the um, table A was actually a statement prior to this so you have to be very careful I guess my point is always think of these in terms of the whole transaction um, so let, let's move forward here and uh, figure out how to translate these keys so I'm going to open up a query window here and um, this first key is the database ID. The second key is kind of the partition ID, which will reveal to you what object was being locked, uh, whether it's a uh, whether it's like a um, index or a table. And this is the actual. Whoops, uh, I moved it a little bit. This would be the actual row that is being locked. So. Or, or, or uh, I should say, being accessed. This is actually the wait resource. So, let me and and I'll post these statements in the description area. So the first statement is this to reveal what what a database. So I know the database here is uh, the sandbox database. And now I have to figure out, okay, what resource was being locked here? So I, I have a statement here, another statement that I could use to look this up. And I'll just copy this ID here, paste it in. And th this is actually um, querying the system objects. and I am using the wrong database so alright so now that I executed you'll see it's the parent table that it was operating on and here th this is a little bit tricky this is called kinda like a hash key which is um a lookup into the row, uh, the the actual row, and and that only works if your wait resource is a key resource, which means it's uh, a particular row within this object. So 
what what was actually being locked here you notice it's it's this index with this it's uh, the clustered index on the parent table and the particular index was actually pk underscore parent table and let me go to this final token here and this is what you have to run now you, you don't necessarily you can't necessarily always find the particular row that it was waiting for the resource on uh, for example if if your statement is a delete then that row doesn't even exist uh, when you're trying to query for it um, and if you wait too long in uh, portions of the key change then the hash would change and you wouldn't be able to find it so in my particular case there's two rows here and I, I know from my statement that actually caused the um, that actually caused the uh, deadlock is actually one and two but in, in, in other particular cases you, you might not be your where clause or your predicate might not actually be uh, that obvious so I, I, I'm just simply putting these IDs in here and running this whoops so I have to insert the table name here and I know from my query here that it's the parent table so if I run this you'll notice this is the hash that that it's actually so these were the exact rows that it was actually deadlocking on so that that's really the information you can garner from these and these IDs are all over so you'll see these are referred to also in this uh, in this table with this associated ID so I, I know from the resource list based on those IDs that the resource and let me separate these out just like I do did with the processes there's two resources here that it's waiting on and and I know it's waiting on it because it's a request type of wait and it's an exclusive lock meaning that it actually wanted to it actually needed to get a lock an exclusive lock to actually alter the data which is what it was waiting for but um, it was actually being locked by the other resource so you'll see here if, if I replace these remember these IDs here I got from this query is the index pk parent table so that's so I already know for example that's what's being locked whoops if I just replace those IDs with parent table and no, notice this doesn't give me the details of the row it was actually up here that gave me the details of the row so um, but that's how you basically read a deadlock graph with those three sections now an, another important aspect is these locks you know the, the mode being X I, I know it's I know it has an exclusive lock on this resource and it's waiting for an exclusive lock on that resource uh, same with this one and these are important because um, you, you have to identify lots of times what type of deadlock it is and, and I'll have a link um, of the more common deadlocks like it could be update update which is in this case it's an update update um, it could be select update you know so, uh, select select uh, insert select you know stuff like that so so once you get familiar with debugging certain types of deadlocks it, it almost becomes second nature for you uh, when you look at a deadlock graph and its properties and you recognize exactly what's going on there and that that just takes experience um, so but okay uh, that that's really the basics of how to read a deadlock graph uh, if, if I go to the other one here I, I particularly put this in a store procedure because I wanted to show you the stack frame now I'm gonna go to the other deadlock that I have and show you the one that's not in a store procedure 
So you notice this one is in an in-store procedure and this one is in an in-store procedure and there's no indication here that it, it is a store procedure because it's ad hoc. So um, you know, this is just a slightly different flavor of the same thing. Um, but yeah, that, that's really it. That's, that's really all I wanted to show you of you know, the three different sections. The key thing is, um, one, the three different sections of a deadlock graph. Uh, two, always think of it as an entire transaction uh, that the process is running under um, and um, the third thing is how to translate this remember this being the database ID this being the um, uh, partition ID or HOBT ID and this being the actual hash uh, well, I'm trying to highlight this um, this being the actual hash of the row but only if it's a key resource. If it's like a page or something, then it's um, then you you would have to look at kind of the um, this page resource here. So, all right. Um, thank you for watching, and I hope this will help you. Uh, you know, have fun debugging your deadlocks. Thank you.